Hello, welcome to Spirit of Life. My name is Geraldine Lee, your host, and our guest is Maureen Kelly. She's involved in the healing ministry, and we had her last week. Welcome, Maureen. Hello, Geraldine. It's great to have you back. It's great to be back. Yeah, you shared about you had quite a conversion and through your um, first the initial when you were younger, and then you uh, had a conversion. Um, God was touching your life mm-hmm. throughout your first marriage and then your second marriage yes. and then you had a deeper conversion in mm-hmm. your second marriage. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And then and then recently you got involved in the healing ministry. Couple yeah. of years ago. Couple of years couple ago. Of years ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So do you feel maybe you can fill the audience in of what got you involved in the healing ministry because that would sort of explain a bit about your past mm-hmm. to bring people on the same page. Well, it was through my eldest daughter initially who'd done mm. a course called yeah. Spirit of Life oh. and said to me, oh, Mum, I think you'd be really good to do that. She mm. told me later on she thought that I'd be really good to get involved. So she had oh. a, a bit of a, a hidden agenda, but the Lord was on the same page. So <laughs> I did the course and then became part of um, a team of involved in prayer ministry. Mm. So you talked to about God as the Lord, you know, and... Some, some audiences might be thinking, what, what do you mean by the Lord as in how do you now have a relationship? What sort of relationship you have with God? No, Jesus. Jesus is my Lord. My so like your master. Your, my, yeah. How do you, when you say the word saviour, what does that mean for you? Well, saved me. But I love, I, I heard an understanding of what salvation meant one day. And it's not just he saved me um, and took away my sin as a saviour in that respect, but that word salvation means total wholeness, it's soundness, it's protection, it's provision, it's like a package deal. Like and a rescue, God's the rescuer. Rescued <laughs> and, and in that rescue, just brought... Rescued you from your sins, your guilt, your... Shame. Yeah. And what confusion. kind Confusion. Of, and just a washing away or cleansing away. Yeah, very much. Yes. Yeah, mm. so, so Lord is like he's number one. He's Lord and it's like he's Lord over all. So mm. every part of my, I, I involve him now in every part of my life. That's been a journey. I, I, anyone I think that comes to a point of conversion, then that's just the beginning. Mm. And it's a, a journey where you come to know him mm. more and more and you get to know yourself more and more. Right? Yes, but initially you resisted. What what made you resist God initially? Because you had a few times when you shared in the first show that that you know opportunities to get closer, but you kind of drifted. Do you remember the you know at times you could have gone closer, but you kind of drifted. Just that not really understanding the Father heart of God, I think. Yes, that so you knew God, but you felt he was distant. Yes. But once you felt him close, then you drew closer. Get a touch of that unconditional love, that mm. no matter who or what we are. I remember that the realisation one day of it didn't matter what I did, mm. he would never love me any more, but he would not love me any less mm. either. And that, that feeling of that confidence mm. that assurance mm. that mm. you're very much loved yeah. so you, so there was things in your life where you didn't feel good enough and what sort of things that happened to you where you didn't feel good enough oh my dad yeah my dad mm. um, different uh, I remember one day I decided to learn how to play the keyboard and yeah. mum wanted me to take my little keyboard over and play for her. Uh-huh. Now, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't that far along in the lessons, but oh, I was having a lovely time and yeah. my dad came home yeah. and he walked in and, and he just went, well, don't give up your day job and just was very oh, mocking. No. Oh, and no. as an adult, a grown mm. woman with three children, four children by then, I, I just broke down and cried. And, oh, wow. You know, oh, I thought so, when you, that was when you were a child no, when you came in. <laughs> <laughs> married with four children. Oh, so, so you was, can see the impact yes, that wanting to please wound, him still yeah. had on me. And so you stopped playing the piano when he said that? Oh, did you? well, I packed it up and went home. Oh, no. <laughs> I never did finish it. It's on my to do list. I'd like to go back. But yeah. there was always that sense of not being good enough, yes. not being able to please him. And 
mum would get cross with me and all I would hear was, he's your father. Yeah. It's just the way he is. Uh, so, yes. Yeah. And what makes you, what has happened that makes you believe that you are loved unconditionally? What kind of things that have happened? Just that growing in God and, and prayer ministry, dealing mm. with um, those feelings of not being able to be good enough that with my dad and accepting that my earthly father did love me. Mm. Um, maybe not the way I wanted, but that knowing that, mm. that he did, that I, I was loved. So. Yeah, so I suppose, would you say inner healing is about, about partly about washing away those those negative thoughts we have about ourselves that we pick up due to our experiences. Yeah, I think it's about lies that we believe. That mm. I think often we don't realise that there's been a lie that we have believed. So the lie that I had believed was that mm. he didn't love me. Mm. Your and dad didn't love you and God didn't, didn't love, love you. Me, oh. so and you had to perform to get that love. So because that. you couldn't play the piano well enough, you thought, oh, mm. you know, oh, his comments. Yeah. But um, gradually mm. I learned that Father God loved me, that mm. he was, yeah. And it, he just became more real, I guess, as the years went on. Mm. Um, uh, Jesus and the Holy Spirit became more real and mm. then Father God. From that time I had that word and he said, my daughter. I used to think of that often and, and even today. To say those words brings a, a warm feeling. Oh, All right. So feeling. once someone gave that message from God, yes. it really touched your heart. And yes. when you can remember those words, then that is your defense against any negative thoughts. Very much. Yes. That's a great thing because, um, mm. you know, when I was studying a bit of psychology, it was talking about as children grow up, they can bring and harness their memory of their love that they have experienced from their parents mm. to deal with problems. So if, if they're going through a bad time, they think, oh, I remember my parents loved me so I can get through this, you know. Yes. And I think that's, that's why childhood's so important sometimes yeah. and the damage it can do yeah. if people have lies. Mm. Yeah, but it's been really interesting talking about this. We probably need to go for a break now. Okay. You've been watching Spirit of Life. Stay with us and we'll be back after the break. <laughs> Hello, welcome back to Spirit of Love. My name is Geraldine Lee, your host, and our guest is Maureen Kelly. Last week she shared about her life story and her renewal of faith, and this week she's been sharing about her involvement with healing ministry. Welcome back again, Geraldine. Maureen. So earlier on you were sharing about how you were touched by God's love and also a sense of in the past being not good enough, but because of your experience of God the Father, you felt that loved unconditionally. Is that true? Right. Yes. Yeah. yes. Yes. And in your involvement with healing ministry, um, what have you what have you discovered from laying on hands and things like deliverance and he healing ministry? Experience myself, um, not always laying on of hands. Mm. Um, often uh, healing rooms, um, they might ask you if you mind if they touch you, they'll mm. put your hand on their shoulder, they'll put their hand on your shoulder, I should mm. say. And, um, and with us, even in, in prayer ministry, we would always ask mm. if they mind us touching them. Yes. Um, but yeah. you certainly don't have to do that. Yeah, no. right. Mm. And what's your experience of any difference in um, inner healing and deliverance? There's, is that very close together? Sometimes it can be. Mm. I think inner healing is, well, it's inner. So it's something to do with your emotions, us, to do with our emotions, a lie that we've believed. Or deliverance often is well, more um, an oppressive thing from outside, like an oppression or a heaviness. Right. Mm -hmm. But often in inner healing, um, 
you can see that there's been a deliverance. It's very gentle. Mm. I, I think it's yes. It's not a harsh deliverance. It's a mm. yes. I've heard that um, once you people forgive, often they don't need deliverance because once oh. the, it's like the the if you don't forgive, it's a little bit of a a hook to have you know evil spirits kind of hook in when, and once you repent or renounce or release that lie and all things the, the that negative spirit just goes it's nothing for mm. it to be attached yeah, yeah. to yeah. that's right that's yeah. where i've read something about that through um the sanfords yes yeah and so besides the letting go through forgiveness is there an area of things like soul ties and what is it I had um, an experience myself with that. I'd never heard of soul ties. Mm. And I was having uh, prayer ministry, possibly the first time I'd had prayer ministry, if I remember rightly. Very new in, our, in my second marriage, and, and we were struggling, as I said earlier, mm. that a lot of baggage that I took into that marriage. And they began to speak about soul ties, and mm. I had never heard of them. And uh -huh. so they explained, in a, especially after a marriage relationship, that there's that intimacy, so there's soul ties. And that if they broke those, it would probably make things easier in their second marriage. And oh, so right. I thought... Mm, does it mean that with soul ties, some of their stuff affects you spiritually and emotionally mm. and vice versa and what some of your stuff affects them? So mm. the, the cutting of the soul ties is like a, a letting, go letting go of the other person's influence on us emotionally, mm. physically sexually and spiritually absolutely mm. i've heard even that even generationally uh -huh. through that when you're in an intimate relationship like that with someone yes you do take on you mean their their past generation, generation like their ancestral, ancestral relatives they can affect so you can also cross with them yes. oh, that's interesting yeah. so when they prayed mm. i honestly felt like an elastic band had broken it even wow. to the point of hearing the sound wow it was quite a um yeah, quite an experience actually mm. and within days mm. i could sense a difference at home in my relationship wow. with my new husband or mm. we'd probably been married a few years at that point but it, they'd been difficult years and they were still difficult in some ways but there was a difference mm. it made quite a difference um, mm. I began to get quite interested in soul ties after that. Yes. And uh, prayed yeah. many times, actually. Yes, yeah, so it's between mm. people. Can it also be between a circumstance and you? I've heard of things like trauma bonds and, and um, you know, where you, you can be connected to certain places and you get affected emotionally. Trauma bonds and fear bonds. Have you heard of those Definitely, too? definitely. Yeah. So there's a cutting. What kind of prayer would you be praying well, I had, even in my journey, and it, that would be another whole story, but it had a very long mm. journey of, um, I'd had panic attacks and fear, fear was, so I had several times prayer where we broke soul ties with certain mm. episodes mm. and memories of things, so, mm. yeah. and trauma, trauma and shock are, have a, an amazing effect on people. Yes. We've seen a lot of people just come out of, Mm. Could yeah. you think of an example of, of any of those things, of a story that you... Well, at, very recently, a mm. friend from church fell, fell off a stool and fractured her neck in three oh, places. Wow. And I haven't been able to visit her. She hasn't been up to visit us. Mm. But I sent her a text message one day and said, mm. I would really like to come and pray to lift off this shock and trauma. Wow. And she rang me last week and um, I prayed for her over the phone. Mm. And her husband has told me that there's been quite a difference wow. that she has had. Uh, in fact, she's asked me for a copy of the prayer wow. so her husband can pray this again. So that was just over the phone, mm. but it, it really had an effect. Mm. Um, and often you just don't really think that a few words can have such a, yes. a powerful effect on mm. something spiritual like that. Wow. Mm. Yeah, I know myself, I had a car accident and and... I was out of sorts for quite a few weeks, and and um, when they prayed with me, I I suddenly went back to the accident, and I suddenly saw a part of me got left in the car in between the seatbelt, and it was like 
uh, yeah, it was like that the joyous part of me got left there. Mm. And they, they prayed that that part would come back to me because it got lost in the, in the I mean, it's something they, they prayed and they could see in the spirit. And it was mm. a bit unusual. But after they prayed that prayer, I just felt a joy come back. And I also felt a release of tears because sometimes when a trauma occurs, you don't feel any emotions. Sure. You're kind of stuck in time and you need to grieve the loss, you know, because sure. I was, you know, bedridden for a few weeks. Mm. Yeah. yeah. But um, we'll probably need to go for a break now. That's all right. <laughs> you have been watching Spirit of Life. Stay with us and we'll be back after the break. Welcome back to Spirit of Life. My name is Geraldine Lee, your host, and our guest is Maureen Kelly. She's involved in a healing ministry, and we've been talking about soul ties and trauma bonds. Welcome back. Thank you, Geraldine. Um, you were talking about something about trauma bonds and how you can actually even cut it from yourself. Could you share a bit more about that? Well, when my youngest daughter was going to leave home, I'd always dreaded the fact that she was going to do that one day because she's a lot of fun to have around and mm. my husband's lovely but he's very, very quiet. And my pastor's wife said to me one day, you've got to let this go, you, you haven't released her. Mm. So I drove up to where the, the new house was where she was going to move. Mm. I'd been crying. I'd mm. been crying and crying and crying, lots of tears. And I sat outside her house and just very simply just said, Lord, just take the sword of the spirit and I cut off every ungodly and mm. unholy soul tie mm. between Fiona and I mm. and I release her to be the person you want her to be and live yes. the life that you've got for her and I release myself to go on with, with the life that you've got mm. for me. Very simple prayer. Yes. And um, I repented for having hung, hung on to that and for some of the things I'd said about how it was going to be dreadful when she'd left home, etc. Yes. I drove away from that house and I did not cry again. Wow. And it's powerful. Yeah, so you powerful. had some words that you said to your husband, isn't it? You dreaded her leaving. Yes. And that yeah. seemed to affect your husband too. Yes. 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 And you yes. and and I think you apologized to him for, for, for yeah. constantly saying I dread her. The Lord spoke to me quite severely really? one night. Yeah, not an did, audible voice. <laughs> yes. And I had that sense, you go and you apologize to your husband and for having said that many, many times and tell him that you are looking forward to this new season in your life. And it's been a very good season. Yes, and did your husband acknowledge the fact that it, it was affecting him? Yeah, that, yeah. Uh, you saying it that it was hurtful. dreading, dreading. <laughs> yes, yes. Yes, but yeah. it was about you you having difficulties letting go of your daughter. Mm. Mm. But it um, sounds like you were obedient to letting go of yeah. your daughter. And I suppose that's something that we all suffer from. We like to be in control, don't mm. we? And that spirit of control mm. can actually break relationships through us not letting yeah. go. I mean, yeah. if you had continued to cry and make your daughter feel guilty about leaving and then mm. cried when your husband tried to comfort you, it could have, I mean, we hear about these stories where relationships get quite sour, sour through yeah. not letting go, isn't it? She didn't really know I was crying so oh, much, right. but he did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he did. Yeah. Mm. So, yeah, so that's powerful. And... We, and the other thing was that you were saying about the lies. So there's, there's some things that we get healed of is um, our perceptions of who God is, who we are, and who other people are. And sometimes we believe lies. Can you give me some examples of lies we believe in? Um, just briefly, again, with Michael and I, <coughs> have me. Um, when again, when Fiona was going to leave home, I, I was so... You're struggling with it so much. I actually went and had some counselling myself, wow. and I had believed the lie that my life with Michael wouldn't get any better. Oh. That and, and a saying that my mother used to say, "You've mm. made your bed, you lie in it." And oh, I realised right. that that was something that I took on, took on, mm. and so I didn't expect 
it could be. So I wasn't trusting God in that either, that, that God could come in and, mm. and um, because Michael's so quiet and I like to talk. Yes, you, you <laughs> oh, could see no future. You thought the this you thought the best was over, and this is oh, this okay. is as good as what it's going to get. get. Yeah. Sort of thing. and you've made your bed. You lie in it. Oh, you know, this right. is this mm. is the way it is. And so I prayed and and repented of taking that lie on. Mm. And um, and life, as I say, it's been a really good season for us, and it's mm. been good for us as a couple. It's a whole mm. new. You know, she's been gone five years now, mm. five or six years wow. now. Longer, actually, probably more like eight. Yes. But, uh, it's been good. Yeah, I suppose the thing that comes to my mind that helps me to think is the the scripture, I have come to give you life and have it to the full. And it sounds to me that that's what you're experiencing. Absolutely. It just yeah. keeps getting better. Oh, that's fantastic. Mm. Um, so what would you like to say a prayer maybe for the audience if anyone's struggling to how to be able to detach and you know and some of the steps would you like to say a prayer or would you like to explain it a little bit before you say the prayer well i would highly recommend prayer mm. ministry yes uh, for anybody i think um, nobody would ever go and have prayer ministry and not benefit in some way mm. um, it's wonderful uh, and there's also healing rooms but it's it's you know there's so much to us and mm. so many things that could be holding us back from that abundant life Mm. because I love the Amplified Bible. It says, to the full, till it overflows. Yes. That's the sort of life he wants, and often we're not experiencing that because of just stuff. Yeah, we're sort of coming from a base of fears, control, Absolutely. attachments, but what Wrong God beliefs. wants is us to come from the freedom yes. that we're loved in Christ and yeah. we can be free. Yes. Oh, that's good yes. news. It is, yeah. yeah. And you were saying that there were some places where people can go for prayers? Mm -hmm. uh, well, one church in, in Blackburn, I'm sure they wouldn't mind mm. me mentioning their names and uh, you could look them up on the website. There's Healing Rooms of Victoria. There's mm. locations throughout Victoria. Yes. And I know there's the Christian Prayer, Christian prayer, prayer Net. Network. And yes. The, yeah. yeah, no, that's fantastic. Mm. So would you be able to say a prayer for the audience? Mm. Like a soul tie or cutting off? A, yes, as you mm, feel led by I God. Feel led. I would. Mm -hmm. Well, Lord, you know that there could be somebody out there right now listening to this. And, and so I would just like to say, in the name of Jesus, in that name that's above every name, we just take the sword of the Spirit and we just cut off every ungodly, every unholy soul tie between this person or these persons and other persons it might be a spouse, a child, a friend, any relationship. We just cut off that every ungodly and unholy soul tie. And we release that person or that event and we release the other people in the name of Jesus to be set free. Father, we repent of any lie, any vow, any sin that has come about because of these ungodly and unholy soul ties. Mm. And we thank you that we can be cut off, set apart, set free in Jesus' name. Yes, that's Amen. wonderful. Mm. Thank you so much. Uh, pleasure, we come to the end of our show, but that was a beautiful it's prayer. Wonderful. I wish you all the best. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. God, and God bless, bless you. you. You've been watching Spirit of Life. Stay tuned next week. Goodbye. And God bless you.